So you don't need to know those things. Don't get caught up with trying to figure those things out. Simply be quiet and hang out here. And then you start to discover the presence. You discover the guru inside you and your guru, your inner guru, you begin to hear the language because when you don't pay attention, the inner guru cannot communicate with you because you don't understand the language. So you're looking for it outside of yourself. You're running to this teacher, that teacher, this teacher, that teacher, because you think they have it and you go and start worshiping him. So you're still projecting it on somebody else. It's not somebody else, sweetheart. It's yourself. You're the one you're looking for. But you can't see yourself unless you're quiet. If your mind is busy, so there's clouds. Clouds are in front of you. So you can't see. It's too foggy. You have to go beyond the mind. Then you start to see yourself. You have no idea how majestic, how powerful, how big you are. You have no idea you're the queen and the king. Yet you think you're a beggar. You're running around with your begging bowl, begging for someone to put something in there. A lover, your parents, your kids, your teacher, someone to maybe give you a little bone. You're not, you don't know you're the king, you're the queen. You don't know your own worth. I'm gonna keep repeating this. Even if I have to say it a million times in a million different sessions, Till you really get it. That what you're looking for is here within yourself. And you are already complete. Complete. You are complete. You're whole. You just don't know it because of your, because of the cultural conditioning of this major divine brainwash hypnosis of not knowing who we are and a few found out who they are and look what they did how revolution what a revolution it was Gautama Buddha Krishna Jesus Abraham Moses Muhammad and other enlightened beings that have come in our modern day, they all discovered the truth of who they are. And they all are pointing out the same thing. Nobody's telling you it's somewhere else. All of them who got it are sending you back inside. And if they don't, means they didn't get it. It's just as simple as that. Anyone sending you to find it somewhere else, that it's in Egypt, it's in Sedona, it's in Maui, it's in Mount Shasta, it's in another star system. Forget it. That's not where it is. It's in you. That's the good news. So what do we do with all these thoughts and feelings, these unwanted emotions and feelings, all this revolution that's happening inside me, this volcano which is about to, it's raging and it wants to erupt. What do I do with this? I just want to go crazy, you know, these emotions come inside me and I'm tied up to this karma and all of a sudden I have this strong karma with parents, with kids, with 
whether they're ill or they're sick or emotionally there's issues or financial issues and all these dif different things how do i deal with it it's so strong it's so powerful what do i do on everyday daily basis zaratustra everything you say sounds great i love it zaratustra i love it when we're sitting together i become calm quiet and very centered but two days or a day after my kids drive me crazy my partner drives me crazy i watch the news i get this anxiety all these things happen until i see you again so what do i do in between i see you're laughing martina <laughs> nice to see you by the way okay you this is a tool i'm sharing with you and you have to do it you can't just do it for an hour or two and then give it up because our natural tendency of suffering is we want to go back to suffer so because you're used to it for years it's become very comfortable that you've been suffering and going through all these ups and downs that you think this is how it should be down deep so you have to change that and you have to change it in the cellular memory you can't just decide mentally i want to change it it has to be changed in the cellular memory so in order to do that it has to be seen if it's not being seen then it's an unconscious pattern that repeats itself because it's not being observed whatever that is let's say you're a cigarette smoker and you're smoking 20 cigarettes a day you want to quit smoking you're smoking cigarettes you want to give it up you can't give it up and then you keep complaining that i need to quit smoking i need to da 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 and then we run to the 7-eleven and buy another pack of cigarettes so the cycle keeps going and going the number one thing is you need to see it you need to become aware of it awareness needs to be here that you have body got addicted to cigarette smoking you have this habit now don't take me wrong i'm not saying smoking smoke or don't smoke i don't have no moral issues spiritual issues or any hang-ups about cigarette smoking do whatever you want to do do what you need to do whatever that is i'm not saying it's spiritual or not it's not spiritual i don't have any stories about it I don't like the smoke of cigarette but you do whatever you want to do so it's not spiritual or unspiritual from my point of view because God is in everything including cigarettes but awareness comes you become aware that you're smoking and you admit it you see it and you recognize that your body wants to go and pick up a cigarette or smoke so you admit it you acknowledge it that that is what's going on so there's awareness here even though you continue doing it but now you are aware of what you're doing because observance is here awareness is here you're not unconscious any longer and it doesn't matter if your body keeps doing it you're no longer addicted to cigarettes because the awareness is here 